AI beats humans in multiplayer, and more coming up on today's episode of the Lace and Tech News. Hey Gadgeteer, you're just in time for the latest episode of the world's only 3-in-1 show on tech, gadgets, and gaming news. That's right, this is the Lace and Tech News. My name is Taylor American. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button right now so that you don't miss out on the latest episode. And hold off on that like button until you get to a section of the show that you actually like. Now, speaking of what's to like, how are you guys enjoying uh, being off of school or, well, okay, if you're working, that really never ends for you. Or be, How about being on vacation or, um, as going to be my case, in about a week or for this nice summer weather for all intent and purposes? Pretty good. What's not to like? Unless you hate nice warm weather. I seriously, I was talking to a guy today and he said, Oh, I don't really like this hot and humid weather. I prefer if it was a little bit cooler. And I'm like, I can't make this guy happy either way you go. Okay, um, go live down in Texas. I don't know, for crying out loud. Anyways, our feature story that we'll be taking a look at today is, uh, while DeepMind can now beat us at multiplayer games too, we'll be taking a look at that. We'll also be taking a look at Apple's WWDC 2019 and what to expect from it. We'll also be taking a look at, well, a leaked design for Pixel 4 coming from Google, but Google didn't leak it. Obviously, an insider leaked it yet again. We'll also be taking a look at Nreal Light Mixed Reality Smart Glasses that I think you might find interesting. Also, we'll be taking a look at Microsoft bringing more games to Steam. Quote, we believe you should have a choice in where you buy your PC games. Yeah, so let's just flood the market. Oh, great idea. Why couldn't you have done that before Microsoft? Duh. Okay, and <laughs> uh, we'll also be taking a look at a remastered Ghostbusters game coming to the PS4 later this year. And finally, we'll be taking a look at Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Yep, the trailer dropped for it and everything. It looks awesome. A lot of people are happy about it. Some people aren't so happy about it. Uh, we'll be getting into some of what's to like and not to like about it. But uh, before we can do that, did you know that more than 56 million hours of music is streamed daily? I know, right? I mean, pfft. oh, and also the second did you know fact is, uh, well, I'm not going to share that today. I'm going to share one fact with you guys today because apparently one's enough. I've been told that if I tell you too many facts at once, your brain explodes. If that's the case, let me know down in the comment section. Uh, either way, it'd be great for, for, for me to know. Uh, I, I mean, I could just, I'm a, I'm a data head, so I'll just sit on a computer all day and just absorb stuff. I almost feel like it's through osmosis, like sitting at the computer, I just absorb information. I don't know about you. I really don't play video games. Well, I play video games somewhat, but I, I play more reading and watching videos and listening to content and learning stuff so i kind of feel like a sponge at times so all right oh well, that's enough of that <sighs> moving right along to today in tech history being that today is may 30th 2019 on this day in history in 1896 we have documented for posterity, or however you say that, uh, the first auto accident on record occurs in New York City when a Duria motor wagon driven by Henry Wells collides with a bicycle ridden by Evelyn Thomas. New Yorkers probably accused Henry of being from Jersey, but he was actually from Massachusetts. In either way, regardless, um, that kind of stunted growth for the automobile industry for many years to come. They said... Why would I have an automobile do the driving for me when I can just ride a buggy or ride a bicycle under my own power? And it kind of just mothballed the whole idea. It's the first documented accident. It was horrible. Then it was bad. Um, what? Oh, wasn't that important? Automobiles are still here to this day. Right. Oh, my goodness. Smart cars. Sorry. I have to continue on with the next of what happened today in tech history before I actually flip my lid. Ugh, because I rant way too much about this stuff. Also... On this day, in 1996, AT&T announces a video phone call system. AT&T held a meeting to announce a system that would allow personal computers to make and receive video phone calls over standard telephone lines. In the years of efforts by AT&T and others to find success in tech, the AT&T system made use of Intel's Pentium processors at that time and compression software to allow both video and audio information to share a phone line rather than a high-capacity ISDN 
P1 or T3 line. So now that you know that about, uh, well, what happened today in his tech history, well, let's actually move on with, um, well, what's happening today. Speaking of our feature story. Oh, I just love that transition. So smooth, so crisp, so fresh. Kind of like the story. Um, proof positive that uh, AI can beat us at multiplayer games, too. By the way, if you guys are interested in any of the articles covered in today's show, head on over to technewsgadget.net. The show note for today, uh, you'll have all the articles that you want. So uh, apparently DeepMind can now beat us at multiplayer games, too. This is an article that comes to us from the New York Times. Well, Capture the Flag is a game played by children across the open spaces of a southern camp and by professional video gamers as part of popular titles like Quake 3 and Overwatch. In both cases, it's a team sport. Each side guards a flag while also scheming to grab the other side's flag and bring it back to home base. Winning the game requires good old-fashioned teamwork, a coordinated balance between defense and attack. So, in other words, Capture the Flag requires what would seem to be a very human set of skills but researchers at an artificial intelligence lab in london have shown that machines can master this game too at least in the virtual world in a paper published today in science and previously available on the website Arziv, before peer reviewed researchers reported that they had designed automated agents that exhibited human-like behaviors when playing the capture to play game mode inside of quake 3 these agents were able to team up against human players or play alongside them tailoring their behavior accordingly they can adapt to teammates with arbitrary skills, said Wojcicki Sarnecki, a researcher at DeepMind, hopefully I got that name right, a lab owned by the same parent company as Google. Through thousands of hours of gameplay, the agents learned very particular skills like racing towards the opponent's home base when a teammate was on the verge of capturing a flag. As human players know, the moment the opposing flag is brought to one's home base, a new flag appears at the opposing base, ripe for the taking. Now, DeepMind's project is part of a broad effort to build artificial intelligence that can play enormously complex three-dimensional video games, including Quake 3, Dota 2, and StarCraft 2. Many researchers believe that success in a virtual arena will eventually lead to automated systems with improved abilities in the real world. And just another reason why we're not going to make Terminator, because Terminator is going to drop in, we're going to try and shoot him with a lead cannon, it's not going to do anything, he's just going to go shoot and kill all of us, so... Uh, yes, PC uh, and, and AI and, and robots are planning to take over the world as we speak here. Uh, for as much as we know, I'm probably reading this article right now. Um, I'm not even real. I mean, you ever think about that? I mean, we could be living inside of a reality so twisted that we have to have it unplugged from our head like the Matrix. We're essentially living in a simulation and we're grown in little farms. Wow. No, <laughs> no, but this, I'm not making this up, okay? Uh, anyways, for instance, such skills could benefit warehouse robots as they work in groups to move goods from place to place or help self-driving cars navigate en masse through heavy traffic. See? See? There you go. Valid point. I'm so glad you brought this up today because I exactly wanted to go on this rant about why smart driving self-AI cars are so much better than humans for driving <clears throat> Anyways, I, you've probably heard of me rant of this in the past. I don't want to bring it up again. I mean, unless you want to hear about it. If you do, let me know down in the comment section. Yeah, you're probably going to type right now, Taylor, you promised an article on it. Why don't you get on that? Well, it's a big, complicated process, especially if I'm going to go in-depth into this article and bring out some valid points. I don't want this to be a short, you know, couple paragraph long article. I want it to be well-researched, have valid points. I could quote a couple people on it and studies on it and other articles on it, too. So I'm going to be a little bit a ways, and it's still a hot topic for the most part. It hasn't really died out, so it'll come eventually. So games have always been a benchmark for AI, said Greg Brockman, who oversees similar research at OpenAI, a lab based in San Francisco. If you can't solve games, you can't expect to solve anything else. Until recently, building a system that could match human players in a quake like Game 3 did not seem possible. But over the last several years, DeepMind, OpenAI, and other labs have made significant advances, thanks to a mathematical technique called reinforcement learning, which allows machines to learn tasks by extreme trial and error. By playing a game over and over again, an automated agent learns which strategies bring success and which do not. If an agent consistently wins more points by moving towards an opponent's home base when a teammate is about to capture a flag, it adds this tactic to its arsenal of tricks. Well, kind of like humans do in real life. Now, in 2016, the same fundamental technique, DeepMind researchers built a system that could beat the world's top players at the ancient game of Go, the Eastern version of chess. Many experts had thought this would not be accomplished for another decade given the enormous complexity of the video game. Well, 
Technology proved him wrong again there. So, yeah, what do you guys think? Good, bad? Otherwise, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below. I'm actually kind of fascinated by this stuff. I love learning about AI and, and uh, automation and, and all everything that comes along with it. Obviously, it's built upon layers and layers and layers of complex programming. This isn't easy stuff to code into a computer. You don't just type in a line of code that says, do my laundry for me, and the robot immediately knows, oh, do my laundry. The do my laundry is at the top of the list in terms of coding. And built into that is like pages and pages of code of here's how you go and walk over to the laundry. Here's how you pick up the laundry. Here's the variables for this and here's the variables for that. And here's the variable, 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 variable. And you put all this together in a big old complex web. It definitely takes a group collective mind of programming and coding and trial and errors and fixing stuff and breaking stuff. And I can't tell you how many times it's probably been broken over and over and over and over again. But uh, suffice it to say, I'm glad I'm not in that kind of um, profession, because like I've said in the past before on other topics, uh, I'd probably be bald. So that's why I'm here reporting on the news for you guys. So uh, there you go. Um, have fun with that. Moving on to our next article, what to expect from Apple's WWDC 2019. So last year's WWDC was a rare step away from hardware for the company without a single device announcement, even though they kind of leaked stuff a lot later on. Uh, in fact, Apple's gadget lines have largely been the subject of quiet releases over the past year. Ahead of big Apple TV unveil, the company issued several press releases highlighting minor updates to flagship lines. Just like last week, it did the same for the MacBook with a quiet announcement around the latest attempt to resolve long-standing issues with the malfunctioning keyboards. Next week's developer show, on the other hand, is shaping up to be something entirely different. All signs point to a big load of announcements, including potentially some pro hardware. Now, after a fairly slow I.O. and build, Apple could really make a splash here. The company is not immune from larger industry trends and is kind of at a crossroads at a moment. Its last financial call highlighted a shifting focus away from hardware and towards services and content. Makes sense, after all. Uh, the smartphone sales have slowed across the board just as the company started making massive investments in content through Apple TV+. Plus. Although, adding pluses to stuff really doesn't help solve anything. It just makes things watered down and stupid. Anyways, that's my own opinion, not the authors here. Uh, of course, WWDC is, at heart, a developer show, and while Monday's kickoff keynote is very much for the public at large, the true nature of the show is highlighting what's new with Apple's various operating systems. So, the biggie is iOS 13, and we got some photos on screen here right now. Um, I will say that if you're listening to the podcast, you are missing out on video. If you want to see the video of today's show, head on over to youtube.com forward slash tech news gadget. Now, the leaks have already started, and the big news so far is system-wide dark mode following in the footsteps of Mac OS. Easier on the eyes and battery, expect the update to take much the same form as it did on a desktop, starting with Apple's own apps and more third-party partners following in the, con in the uh, coming months. So... Uh, Bloomberg's got a bunch of additional features for iOS 13, which has been reportedly operating under the code name Yukon. And unsurprisingly, the health app is getting a makeover. In fact, expect health to be a big focus for the company yet again at the event. Native support for duet display or dual display, like second screen iPad functionality, has been rumored to be in the works for a while. On a personal note, um, native support will only make things better. Mail, maps, and homes are said to be receiving updates as well. There will be bug fixes throughout as well, said to make the system operate better on new and old systems alike. It's a nice upgrade and perhaps a tacit acknowledgement of the fact that consumers are simply holding on to their devices for longer periods of time. Oh, goodness. It's like it's difficult to figure it out. It's like if somebody likes the gadget that you bought and it's good quality, make it last. Ugh. Also, we'll be looking at Mac OS 10.15. And much like the smartphone, the PC is very much in a transitional space, though its identity crisis has been ongoing since it was completely overshadowed by the smartphone. So for Apple, this means reclaiming the throne of King from uh, the creative professionals trying to pull the title away from it. To start things off, the company is once again going to borrow liberally from iOS. Last year, the company showed off a trio of apps, news, stocks, and voice memos as a preview of the upcoming ability to port iOS apps to the desktop. That attempt to foster Mac app development codenamed Marzipan, will take center stage. Other iOS cribbed features include screen time, iMessage effects, and Siri shortcuts, along with updates to a handful of existing Mac apps. As for hardware, we're looking at some Mac hardware here. The long-awaited arrival of the Mac Pro, um, but 
take this one with a grain of salt because while we've all been burned before, as previously noted, Apple hit pause on that category, which plans to completely revamp the high-end desktop. The iMac Pro has addressed the need for some, but for many pros with demanding workflows, there's been a <laughs> trash can-shaped hole in their heart. Uh, just about all signs appear to point to the long-awaited refresh arriving next week. Ditto for a recently rumored 31.6-inch 6K Pro display, which would fit nicely alongside the Pro and the smoldering ashes of your checkbook. Also, what's this? Apple's most recent event was all about Apple TV. The company had a lot to show off on that front, and while the redesigned app has already arrived, expect the company to continue talking up Apple TV Plus, the forthcoming billion-dollar cable-killing premium content offering from the company. Last time Apple talked up the Apple Watch, it had some transit news to discuss. That goes live in New York tomorrow, by the way, um, in terms of uh, the health front. They have a lot more stuff coming with that as well. So to our voice memos calculator and the book apps, the party gets started Monday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And uh, TechCrunch will be there with live blogging, breaking news, and um, a whole bunch of fun stuff there. WWDC kicks off in San Jose on June 3rd. So, there you go. There's your uh, announcement, at least Apple-wise, uh, for today's episode. Yeah. I'm sitting there trying to figure out how the, how the best way to end it and segue into something new. I didn't. I just kind of killed it. I was just like, nope. So, moving on to some more tech news. Google Insider leaks a stunning Pixel 4 design. Now, if you didn't know, Google's new Pixel 3a is by far the best sub-$500 smartphone you can buy, but the Pixel 4 is where mo most excitement lies, and well, it's easy to see why. In a new tweet, Slash Leaks, the site re now run by remarkably accurate leaker Stephen Hemferstoffer, has revealed the Pixel 4 has an all-new design, and it shows Google will finally give the Pixel range some style with the perfect hybrid of the Galaxy S10 Plus and the iPhone XS following years of wrapping great tech in a dated chassis. Slash Leaks obtained its image via casemaker Skinomi, which is so confident in the sources that it's already taking pre-orders from customers. The bad news, however, is Skinomi is only selling a screen protector at this stage, so we don't get a look at the back of the phone, with Google widely expected to move the Pixel range to dual or even triple cameras, the key point of interest. Google accidentally confirmed the Pixel 4 back in March, but until now the key details have largely remained a mystery. This in complete contrast to the Pixel 3, which arguably was the most leaked smartphone uh, of last year. So, we'll see. There you go, there's an image of it so far. So, there you go, here's your quick uh, Google Pixel 4 news for today. All right, moving on to some more gadget news. The Enreal Light Mixed Reality Smart Glasses is debuting for 500 US dollars. Enreal said it will sell its mixed reality smart glasses for $500 later this year. The company also said that a developer edition is available today for 1200. The Beijing-based company made the announcement at the Augmented World Expo event today in Santa Clara, California. Now, the author here tested out the 3-ounce glasses yesterday and they were both uh, light on their head and amazingly bright, which is a rare combination and are quite impressed by it. Enreal, which has partnered with Qualcomm and LG U+, can do this because it connects the glasses via a USB-C wire to a smartphone where most of the computing is done. Um, so yeah, sorry guys, you have to walk around with it plugged into a cord. It looks a little bit awkward-ish, but it's, to be fair, pretty light. So recently, Enreal announced that it had raised an additional $16 million in funding from China Everbright Limited New Economy Fund and a bunch of other places. Now, in terms of what's behind the tech for this, it uses the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 mobile processor. The glasses have a wide 52-degree field of view and high-definition 1080p resolution. Enreal said they can be worn for hours at a time since they don't weigh much more than ordinary glasses. Over time, the company wants to tap 5G wireless networking tech to deliver full mixed reality experiences to consumers. The $499 package called the Enreal Light Consumer Kit will ship later this year with Enreal Light glasses, which can be connected by USB-C cable directly to compatible XR-optimized devices powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 mobile platform. So... Looks like it provides a lightweight XR viewer that allows consumers to take advantage of 5G, including high bandwidth and low latency, to deliver immersive experiences virtually anywhere. So, pretty impressive here. Looks like they're partnering with carriers including China Mobile, Telecom, Unicom, EE, KDDI, KT, LGU+, 
Soft, Bank, Corp, and Swisscom. It will be available uh, SDK-wise in August of 2019. So yeah, quite impressive. And this is all we got so far. So if you're looking for something light, something fancy, something fast, at least what they're hoping, um, there you go. The Enreal Smart Glasses. I swear I heard Walter in the background, but uh, I'll just continue on with, um, like I wasn't here, Walter, the um, squawking dog, or the yodeling opera dog. I don't know. Look it up on YouTube. It's hilarious if you're looking for a laugh. So moving on to some gaming news. Microsoft is bringing more games to Steam because it says, we believe you should have a choice in where you buy your PC games. So in a big move for its approach to PC gaming, Microsoft has announced that it's planning to bring more Xbox Game Studios to Steam freeing them from the confines of the Microsoft Store, because apparently it's going so well for them. Uh, that store itself isn't good, dead and gone. It's part of Microsoft's plans to bring the Xbox Game Pass subscription into the PC, which it also announced today. Uh, but it will no longer be the only way to play those first-party games on PC. Our intent is to make our Xbox Game Studios PC available in multiple stores, including our own Microsoft Store on Windows at launch. We believe you should have the choice in where you buy your PC games. Uh, Phil, 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 you couldn't figure this out sooner? It's not that difficult. Where do you think all of your people reside? Multiple platforms, multiple programs. It's not that difficult. You're a software company for crying out loud. It's not oh, for crying out loud. So in the past, Microsoft's support of Steam has been spotty. Most of its new games have remained exclusive to the Microsoft Store, which means they're only available as universal Windows apps, a container used on modern Windows with a number of drawbacks for many games. UWAs are not nearly as open to modding overlays or tools like Reshade and have largely been unpopular with PC gamers who care about those features. Um, hence the reason why Minecraft was such a big thing. And yet I beat my drum all by myself. In the corner, salty tears. Yes. No, I'm, I'm feeling really bad for Notch right about now. Um... <laughs> Some of Microsoft's strategy games like Halo Wars have already been released on Steam, and the real prelude to today's announcement was the news that the Master Chief Collection will be rolling out on Steam starting this year, starting with Halo Reach. Today's announcement of game names, uh, let's see, Age of Empires 1 to 3, Definitive Editions, and Gears 5 is the first games coming to Steam. They don't mention games currently exclusive to the Microsoft Store like Will Sea of Thieves or Forza Horizon be on there, but Steam releases them. Um, it seems like a good possibility it'll cross over as well. Enabling gamers to play together through cross-platform play and cross-network play across Windows 10 PCs and consoles is vitally important. Building communities across all of these players, regardless of the store or platform they've chosen, is also vitally important because it helps bring players together, allows games to find their largest audience, and allows gaming to deliver its true potential of uniting people around the power of play. <sighs> I'm so glad, Microsoft, you finally figured this out. Now, currently, uh, open question about uh, how will this whole matchmaking friends list work for Xbox games like Sea of Thieves on Steam, but Microsoft clearly has a plan for Halo and a strong interest in cross-platform support, and seeing how they announced the partnership with Sony, we could be seeing something hopefully more fruitful coming out of that, but we might not hear it for some time. So, there you go. Um... Seems like the article then just goes on to explain more stuff. Microsoft will be talking more about its PC plans, including the Game Pass, at its E3 press conference on June 9th. So, there you go. Ooh, gaming news. You guys like Ghostbusters? Well, a remastered game is coming to the PS4 this year. Oh, and by the way, they also released the first trailer today. So, 10 years ago, the original Ghostbusters, the video game, debuted. Now the game is being remastered for PS4, and according to the trailer released today, it should be available sometime this year. Fans might be happy to know that all of the original in-game videos were found on a hard drive that belonged to one of the game Ghostbusters video game creators, so you can expect familiar cutscenes remastered in 4K as well as enhanced textures and lighting. You'll recognize the voices and likenesses of the original cast members Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, Bill Murray, and Ernie Hudson who were involved in the 2009 game. Now, the remastered version doesn't stray from the original storyline, which was penned by Ackroyd Ramis. It picks up right where Ghostbusters 2 left off, and you'll join the cast members as a new recruit, learning to hunt and wrangle ghosts throughout New York City. While the original game was available on Xbox 360, PS3, and PC, this appears to be a PS4 exclusive. 
according to PlayStation, and it should be ready sometime this year. That's all we have for you guys. Uh, so if you're interested in Ghostbusters, there you go. There's a trailer for you. You can click the article link and enjoy. And finally, well, Call of Duty news. Call of Duty. Modern Warfare. Looks at crossplay, and it's dropping a season pass. So Call of Duty Modern Warfare. 2019's entry into the long-running franchise is making some significant changes to the Call of Duty formula by reimagining of Infinity Ward's 2007 classic. The game will feature continuity and consistency across all of its game modes, meaning character progression will carry over between them and guns will feel the same in multiplayer as in single player. I didn't know there was a difference. Uh, beyond that, there are changes coming that should be good news for all fans who pick up the game when it releases on October 25th. Specifically, those who don't want to play pay for new maps but do want to play with those on different platforms so here's what they got planned for that infinity ward and activision shared the welcome news in a press release that it dropped alongside its first modern warfare trailer which uh, well is included or you can see it on youtube cross play will be available across pc ps4 and xbox one letting players on any platform jump into a match with those on another system that's still fairly uncommon which sony uh permits to be playable across PS4 and Xbox One. Another surprising bit of news is that Modern Warfare will not have the traditional season pass in which past players were required to buy in order to receive new maps over the course of the year after Call of Duty games release. Instead, post-release maps and events for Modern Warfare will be free for all, mimicking a shift we've seen many competing games make. Well, duh, because you can cash in better that way. Jeez. Both features should go a long way to help keep the Call of Duty player base together without limiting them to playing with people on the same platform and who own the same maps as they do. In general, there should be a whole lot more people to play against. It may also make the Call of Duty esports scene a little bit more welcoming as players will be able to compete on their preferred platforms. Although, will they be able to topple Apex Legends? That is the question. One thing that is not changing is that it will have timed exclusive content on the PS4. We don't know all the details at this point, but much like last year's Black Ops 4, the window will only be 7 days, which is a much shorter than the 30-day window COD's exclusivity used to be. So, they showed that off. So, a lot of it's looking awesome so far, story-wise, single-player tech that's going along with it along with reimagining the story infinity ward said it's working to make modern warfare more relevant to the current world and drew inspiration for the game story from real world conflicts and documentaries about them as well as recent hollywood movies also it seems i'm i want to say this because i ran across it if it's confirmed or not i don't know let me know it on the comment section but i do not believe that zombies will be in call of duty modern warfare 2019 so for those of you who are interested in a zombie mode there will be no zombies so i could be wrong um but i could also be right because I, I swear i saw an article saying that there wouldn't be any zombies in either case it seems like it's finally gearing up to be finally something interesting uh once again um so good luck that's all i gotta say and with that, that wraps up this episode of the Lace and Tech News. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Keep in mind that next week there will be no shows for the first week of June. I am on vacation, so there will be a show tomorrow. I'll be the short one. But uh, other than that, um, enjoy summer, guys. Lace and Tech News can be found on every major platform, including Apple, Spotify, Google, YouTube, Stitcher, Overcast, and more. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to let us know by clicking that like button and by leaving a comment below. Also, double check that you are subscribed and following. And then you have notifications turned on so that you don't miss out on the latest episode. I'm your host, Taylor Merrick. And remember, for the latest in tech, gadget, and gaming news, visit technewsgadget.net. Pretty much keep being awesome, guys. And I'll see you on the flip side.